Ooh, baby, I love the way. Hey. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Jackie Ina, aka Jackie O. Don't forget the O. Jackie, 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 Jackie. Jagger, 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 jagger. We do love translucent powder in the Ina household. Hourglass just recently launched their newest veil translucent setting powder. And it's always so interesting to me, like what products pique your interest because I feel like it's always the most random, unassuming products that get the most requests. And needless to say, I got a lot of requests to try this bad boy. I believe this is my first time dabbling in a powder from Hourglass. So I'm interested to see what they bring forth to the table because I really kind of feel like you got to really put like your big girl panties to bring a new translucent powder to the forefront. So today I'll be trying that product out for the first time, sharing details, thoughts, review, demo, all that good stuff. Now, before we do get started, we do want to see you come back. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. It might be that way. It might be, I, I don't know. It shouldn't be too hard to find. If you can find the comment box, to talk crap, you can find the subscribe. Go ahead and hit that. <laughs> hit that subscribe button right now. And of course, make sure you also hit that bell button if you wanna be notified whenever there's new videos. I'm gonna stop rambling, let's go ahead and get started. So the Hourglass Translucent Setting Powder or Poudre Fixante Translucite. Beautiful packaging, absolutely stunning. I have no complaints about the packaging except for the fact that when you first open it, there's like this little plastic cover thingy that covers the hole and it was just really difficult to take off with my nails. I know. I know, first world problem, but it was just really annoying. I actually really, really like the packaging. I mean, it's gold, it's very bougie looking. You got a smooth matte finish. Inside just looks like a piece of jewelry. It's just gorgeous. And there's little hole cutouts with the shape of an H. Do you see just the little details, Hourglass? And then the brown mirror finish top is what you get when, this is just what you get when you look at the packaging from, you know, start to finish. In this jar, you get 0.36 ounces, and let's compare that to some of my faves. Laura Mercier Translucent. I compare everything to Laura Mercier Translucent Powder because even if it's not your fave, we can all kind of mutually agree it's definitely one of the most raved about. So the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder, same category, so they're both luxury items. This one is 38 Zoolas. Now, sometimes it's not always fair to judge just based on ounces because depending on like the product, like the density of the product, it just, they don't always like transfer this. They don't always like transfer out the same. Okay, swatching the powder. Wow, that feels very soft to touch. Extremely smooth, velvety, almost kind of looks like it is pore filling. It definitely filled in the pores in my hands, I will say that. Can you see that? It's supposed to have soft focus, light reflecting particles. Then again, that's what they all say. That's what they're supposed to do, I would think, right? It also claims to blur imperfections, minimize pores, fine lines, and wrinkles for effortlessly smooth skin, girl. It says it can also be used on all skin tones and all skin finishes. And I think that most of you guys that watch my videos are just still like desperately out there searching for the right translucent powder. And I think that's why I got so many requests for this. I'm just gonna get right into this face and I'm going to test this powder out the same way that I would any other powder. You guys know I start off with a primer. I'm starting off with the Mineral Veil Primer. Did I tell you guys this was $46? This is $46 if I didn't mention it earlier. I'm sorry, I forgot. So disregarding the purple avatar filter I have on my face, that's just the primer, that's just the primer. I usually like to set my primer. I usually like to set my primer with powder like immediately after. It helps control oil, it helps control shine. It does not make your foundation cakey. I always have to say those three things because that's definitely like a new concept for, you know, a lot of people who maybe are a little new to my channel. And if you are new, by the way, welcome. The T is I have oily combination skin, okay? So sometimes, you know, primer alone, it's, 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 it's cute, but my pores, they kind of laugh at just primer alone. So I just find that whenever I need my makeup to just be stayed put and laid for a couple extra hours, I do this because in my experience, it just helps reduce shine a lot more. And as you can see, that didn't add, like that went on as translucent as translucent gets because as you can see, I'm still purple. I still got the avatar filter on my face. So I'm also noticing that it looks like this bottle cap has a stopper. So whenever I shake it up, I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean by that. Like it kind of keeps it from overflowing in a way. That's kind of cool. Maybe if you travel a lot and you are very cautious of things spilling, I can totally see this being like a way to like conserve product and keep it from getting too unmanageable in the packaging. Using the Vanish Stick Foundation, I use the color Almond, Golden, Golden Almond. Almond is my highlight shade actually. 
I'm gonna blend it around town, girl. Oh, that feels so good to blend actually on top of the powder, wow. Then I take espresso to contour. What y'all need to do is stop sending me candy in them PR packages. I wouldn't have to contour this much this week. The, instead of candies, why don't y'all start sending cookies? <laughs> Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer. This is it, you guys, this is it, this is it, this is it, this is it. Now the goal and the objective today is really to make sure that the powder doesn't act funky in comparison with this concealer or just concealers in general. Also, we need a powder that does not give us flashback, okay? I don't wanna look back at my pictures and see regrets and failed marriage, okay? I wanna see success. I wanna see happiness. I wanna see brightness, but not so much, Cardi B, you know, like not that kind of brightness. Oh, what are you gonna do? So you wanna get down? Get down on it. Get down on it. Get down on it. We just wanna blend in. We got how you wanna do it when you really don't wanna blend. My standing on the wall. How you wanna do it when you really don't wanna dance. My standing on the wall. Get your back up off the wall. So the Sephora employees be singing. You know it when you're VIP. Oh, can you blend that section, please? All right, I'ma chill. I'ma chill. I'ma chill. I'ma chill. Now this concealer is also very like matte, like once it sets, it doesn't really move. So this could go really good or very wrong. Hopefully we don't wind up in a situation where the powder clings to the product because sometimes that can happen. By the way, the color of this powder, I really actually prefer. It's not white, it's not yellow, it's beige. I don't like stark white powders. I prefer off-white or butter yellow. All right, so we loaded up some powder. I'm gonna take off the excess on the back of my hand and start to, oh. That's almost white when you put it on though. Oh, oh! Stop playing, stop playing, stop playing! Yeah, I feel like I have to work quick because this may cling a little bit. Or am I just paranoid? I don't know. It's really soft, really soft. I can feel how soft it is. Okay, Hourglass, for $46, don't you let me down. I'm coming to your headquarters and I'm gonna have some choice words for you. Actually, so far, you know, I actually really, really like the finish. You can tell it is, Definitely, it definitely adds a smooth finish to the skin. Let's sculpt while we're at it. You guys know I love a reverse contour. I don't know, you guys, she's kind of snatched. Like, I'm really feeling like they might have just did something. Now, I do have oily skin, so for me, this step is not only you know, setting everything in place because that's what translucent setting powders do. For me, I'm also looking for something that's gonna control shine. This feels so soft when you apply it. I can feel it and it just kind of melts into the skin. Damn. If I could change one thing, I would add a little bit more yellow. Definitely softer than Laura Mercier's translucent loose setting powder. However, not not everybody wants a super soft powder. And sometimes I feel like a powder can be too fine milled to where it like evaporates onto your skin. That's not what's happening here. It's almost like it almost coulda, woulda, shoulda been, but it's definitely not. Like I feel it sitting, oh. What's happening here? She do got bags, girl. Don't be judging. Maybe I put on too much concealer. I don't know what's going on there. Do you see how it's adding a glow? It's it's adding a glow to my skin. Do you see that? Look at that, look at that. That's not just my lights. And I'm definitely not wearing no highlight yet. Hmm. Now I'm gonna take just a very small amount, like literally even gonna tap it off the back of my hand and set the rest of my face particularly around like my mouth area. This is where things break up the fastest, but you know I stay popping off. And around my nose, like I really kind of stamp it in. And then around my brows, I get shiny there. Basically hit that T-zone. I definitely see that light reflective particle. Um, I don't know if I like it for this area because I feel like it's only highlighting that sunkenness that I have there. Hmm, yep, I see it even more now. I see it, I see it. Now the only way I'm gonna know the real tea on this situation is once I like finish out the whole look, do the eyes, sweep out the excess powder. That is what is really gonna make or break. Like if this still sticks here and clings, it's, it's kind of 
the shimmer particles are kind of clinging to my concealer here. And it also doesn't help that I have like an indent in my under eye, so it's really annoying. I'm gonna fill in my brows and then move on to the shadows. We're using the Dominique Cosmetics Lemonade Palette. Congratulations to my baby, Kristen Dominique. I love you, girl. Fresh off the press yesterday, so you know she's ready to explore. Dora the Explorer with the purple wig. By the way, there was also a brush with this launch. This may have already been a pre-existing brush. I'm not sure. I do prefer, for the most part, to use a sponge for my powders, so I just didn't bother to use it. But I have been getting great use out of this brush, as you can see, because she's a real cute bronzer brush, and I'll demo that a little bit later. Okay, so this has been on under eye for about 10 minutes. Me and my brows were just having a love moment. Okay, it took me a while. Let's get into that lemonade palette, though. A boom, boom, cack. So she's really cute for the summer, and I love the whole lemonade theme. You know you're onto something when a big brand comes out with something similar as you. Maybelline has a lemonade palette, and then Dominique Cosmetics. I also love how she stamps the brand initials in the shadows, just saying. I'm going to ooh, come through Mango. I'm gonna pop that into my crease. I actually think I want this to blend in with my skin tone a little bit more. So you know what? I'm already working, I already put the yellow down, but I know for sure I'm gonna put sweet tea on top. Wow. Excuse me, color. I'm blending both of those colors from inner to outer crease. All oh, those two together look gorgeous actually. Actually, these shades actually feel like they're more pigmented compared to the first palette though. Hmm. It may be a reach, I may be tripping. It's not a bad thing, I'm not complaining. Definitely think it's a good thing. The two of these together though are absolutely beautiful. There's definitely kickback on the palette. You can't see it because I just blew it off, but just FYI, this palette does come with, a hey, hey there. This palette does come with a mirror and you know what? Quite a big mirror at that. So that's always a plus. Before we pop on a lid color, I'm gonna take my Smashbox photo, the eye primer, you know which one I'm talking about. And pop that onto my lid. No clue what I'm doing today. Just gonna go for it. Blueberry Fizz looks like she'll be a match made in heaven for today's bundle. So I'm gonna put that on my lid. Ooh. Wait a minute now. Well, that's gorgeous. That really is complimenting my hair quite nicely. I'm gonna take Chai Tea. This is a really unique kind of mauve brown color and I'm stamping that into my outer V. And then I'm gonna start blending upwards. Oh, that's so pretty. Gosh, who would have thought? That's beautiful next to that purple. I'm not really blending, I'm just kind of patting. I'm going back to Blueberry Fizz and popping that on my lid. It got a little lost in the crease color. It's cool, just get right back in line. Going back to Chai Tea, I'm gonna blend that along my bottom lash line. I cannot get this at the best angle. I'm so sorry. And then what we wanna do around that is go back to Sweet Tea. That's what we gonna do. Actually, I switched to a fluffier brush for the step so it looks more blown out. Yeah, that's what I want. That's exactly what I want right there. Peach has really been like coming for me ever since I opened this palette. It's not normally a color that I would really reach for, but I think it would be perfect as an inner corner, a tear duct for this look. We're just gonna take a bit of peach and pop her right where she belongs. But since peach wanna run up, See, that for me would be too light for a lid color, but in the inner corner, it has just the right amount of like champagne and peach. That's stunning. I'm gonna take cucumber, basically use every shadow in the palette challenge, and I'm gonna sweep some of that along the bottom lash, which you're probably not gonna see because of my eyelashes anyway, but hey, A for effort, okay? No shadow left behind. Wetting it would definitely help enhance it down there for me, so. Some fix plus, by the way. There we go, there we go. Don't get too carried away though along that bottom lash line because that can get really crazy looking real fast. Soup cute, loves. I'm gonna take my favorite 24 seven glide on pencil from Urban Decay. This is the color Alkaline and I'm just gonna draw a line 
Not too thick, not too slender. Then I'm going back to chai tea. And then I want to blend over that liner and smoke it out. I'm going to pop on the Intoxicating Lash from Flutter Lash. And while that glue dries, I'm hoping I can find out the real tea on what's good. Well, hopefully all of this will be cleaned up. Actually, just kidding. I don't want y'all to roast me and say those lashes are too thick and you can't see the eye look. So instead, I'm going to take Bellamy Seeing Double Lash. You guys, Bellamy, I know I've told you guys this before, but seriously, don't sleep on their lashes. They're bomb. I'm going to throw on some mascara real quick, though. Okay, I feel like this under eye is even more highlighted by the eyeshadow. So let's see what happens. We flick it off. Okay, so I think that's better. That was also easy to flick off. You see how pronounced it is under my eye, but that's like, that's just genetics, you know? Like I don't expect the powder to do <laughs> Juvederm, honey, or is it Restylane? I don't freaking know. I'm not really mad at it. I think the real test is gonna be if it has flashback. By the way, this is the Veil powder brush and this is $64. I, <sighs> okay, I'm so indifferent when it comes to like brushes, depending on what they use. I don't think you have to splurge on foundation brushes. I do think you should splurge on beauty blenders, like your sponges, okay? You can use any eyeshadow brush, honestly. You can twerk those, work those flip it and reverse those. When it comes to bronzing brushes, I will spend money on a bronzing brush. I know this isn't a bronzer brush. It is advertised as a powder brush, but if you really think about it, a bronzer is a powder. So I just feel like this is just a really good multi-purpose brush. I'm not all that wild about dual ended brushes, but you know what? I don't mind them. And I do find that both sides are useful. As you can see earlier, I was using it under eye. I swept off powder with it, so. I'd recommend it. Do you have to run out and spend your rent check on this brush? No, of course not. There's definitely brushes that are out there that I think get the job done, but I just feel like it's really hard finding like bronzer brushes that do what I want in a bronzer. I'm very particular about the shape, the way that they disperse products. So I would spend $64 on a brush. I'm not telling you to, that's just my two cents. Now I'm just bronzing away my problems. 10 years later, I'm gonna throw on my falsies. Falsies on, check. You know, I will say for me to not have added blush or highlight, I feel like this whole side of my skin looks so radiant and like my whole face looks very radiant and very glowy. I'm almost kind of thinking maybe this is just a powder that's best applied with a brush. Um, if you're a baker, you know, a seasoned cake baker, you may have a little trouble with this powder, but I really actually, I actually really like the way it looks. I feel like this entire look is like screaming for some NARS orgasm. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of that on a blush brush, the pressed version, and pop that onto my chicka chicks, my chicka 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 chicks. Now, as you guys know, I went to the orgasm launch a couple weeks ago with NARS in Las Vegas, and they've expanded the whole orgasm line. It now comes in loose, and it's so pretty. Right onto the high points of my cheekbones and just dust that over. That's so pretty. I almost feel like orgasm and this powder have a bit of the same undertone. Just look how that blended right into my skin. I'm gonna take some of Kristen's new glosses from her Lemonade Launch. This one here, I already took it out the box. I just wanted to smell it and it does smell really good. Oh, she's cute and she's neon. This looks like, if this isn't called Pink Lemonade, I want a refund for the products I haven't bought yet. All right, all right, now wait a minute. How dare I forget my mole? Okay, so this wasn't called Pink Lemonade, but it was called Strawberry Lemonade, and it's fine, close enough. I'll let it slide. Kristen, I will let it slide this time, it's fine. That is the best smelling lip gloss I've ever smelled. Oh, it literally smells like Strawberry Lemonade. It's, I can't, I, I can't. Let's first of all, let's just see what it looks like. Okay, so it's pretty clear, pretty sheer. This is Strawberry Lemonade. They're all, there's no point in swatching these because they're all pretty clear. Peach tea. And yep, you bet I'm gonna take a big whiff before I swatch it. This one's a bit more on the peachier side. But on my complexion, these all are virtually gonna pretty much look the same. And this last one is sweet tea. And sweet tea looks like this. This is Sorbet lipstick from Dose of Colors. It's like a pinky, it's like a coral color. Okay, you're cute and all, but you low key need a liner. Just stating facts out here, bro. She's not bad on her own. She's okay, okay, okay. I was a little harsh. This lipstick doesn't smell as good. It has like that 90s. Remember when lipsticks didn't have scents? Like in the 90s and the 2000s when we were all playing with our parents' makeup? 
It smells like one of those lipsticks. This is BFF3 liner from ColourPop. Every chocolate girl needs a BFF3, just saying. First time wearing that lipstick. Found a winner winner chicken dinner. Let's do peach tea, why not? Let's do peach tea, let's do it, let's go for it. This is just a beautiful blend of mirrored shine. Oh, with a signature sweet lemonade scent exclusively for Dominique Cosmetics. Mmm, smells so good. That shine though? Let's wrap this up and give you guys a flash test. Okay, so I took a flash test, which I'm gonna put right here. Now that I really look at it, it just doesn't warm up the skin the way that I would like. I like the idea of the powder. Like, I like what it does to the skin. I like the way it makes my skin look in person. However, I do feel like it is one of those powders that you just need to sweep over the skin, something that you don't like press into the skin with a sponge. Maybe I used a bit too much. I can be a little powder heavy because you know, she is a little oily doily. So sometimes I do tend to get a little bit of just a little carried away with the powder. Like on one end, I think it's a beautiful powder for camera. I'm a little conflicted on how I feel about it for pictures though. There's really only flashback in the areas where I really pressed it in with the sponge. I feel like if you literally just kind of grazed over the skin a little bit, didn't worry about baking, you know, used very little powder, you could still get that look and effect that I love from this powder without like the flashback. A little bit of this definitely goes a long way and maybe that's why they charge you for more products. I, I, I don't know, I don't got answers. I'm not a rep for Hourglass. I'm just speculating here, okay, thank you. All in all, I was happy with the powder. I definitely will approach with caution next time. Also, so I hope you enjoyed the look we created from the Lemonade Palette from Dominique Cosmetics. Congratulations, Kristen. Once again, another banger. I think that she's so talented, so sweet, and it's just nice to have a gem like her in the beauty community. I always just feel like I have to show you that I have green tips because it gets cut off in my lens. But anyway, no one cares. No one cares about your wig, Jackie. It's all about the videos. Okay, fine. Give the people what they want. Did you click yet? Why are you still here? Is it because of my brows? They are pretty nice. I know. Thank you.